you're about to see a revolutionary film. For the first time ever, a film dares to go far beyond the moral arguments which have been used against animal experimentation for over 100 years. This film exposes not only the terrifying tortures which disguised as science are inflicted upon millions of animals, but also the incalculable damage to human health that such a scientific fraud is responsible for. Some of the facts presented here will directly contradict what you have been told and taught for years, even what you firmly believe in. This is because the conditioning we all have been subjected to, some may call it brainwashing, began shortly after we were born. I am only asking you that you examine the evidence presented here using your logic and common sense. Try to put aside any preconceived notions that you might have on the subject. A word of caution. Some of the scenes may be hard to watch. You can always close your eyes for a few seconds while still listening to the narration, since this will probably be the most important film on the subject that you will ever see it is very important that you watch it in its entirety. In closing, I would like to say that this film signals the birth of a brand new anti-vivisectionist movement in the United States. This new movement, based upon the evidence collected by Swiss author and medical historian Hans Rusch, will succeed in abolishing animal experimentation, not only on self-evident moral grounds, but on medical and scientific grounds. This massive body of evidence is contained in his breakthrough books, Slaughter of the Innocent and Naked Empress. All of us, including future generations, are in his debt. Every single year, some 100 million animals of all kinds are killed in the U.S. alone in biomedical research and testing. These animals are used by universities, hospitals, pharmaceutical and cosmetic companies, industrial complexes of all kinds, and by NASA and the military. The number of animals used by the military is unknown and thus is not included in the 100 million figure. The military tests all weapons, including atomic bombs, on live animals. Animals are also used as surrogates for man in warlike situations. The evidence gathered in this film will prove that animal research is not only a self-evident crime against animals, but also a crime against humanity. Some well-meaning people still believe that animal research can be humane. The fact is that humane animal research is a contradiction in terms simply because the very aim of animal research is to cause distress and pain by trying to recreate disease and trauma. The goal is never to cure, since the animals are always healthy before the experiments. 
How can anyone burn, mutilate, or shock the pain centers of the brain with electricity in a humane manner? Anesthetics and pain-relieving drugs are not required by law and thus are not given to an estimated 85% of the animals used. One reason for this can be found in the fear on the part of the researcher that the anesthetic might interfere with the experiment. In many instances, anesthetics are replaced with restraining devices or drugs which allow the animals to feel pain, but which paralyze their capacity to move or cry out. Have you ever wondered why high school students are forced to dissect animals? Since the role of a high school is not to turn out zoologists or veterinarians, the existence of dissection is impossible to justify from either the educational or scientific points of view. The real reason is, of course, that the seed of desensitization has to be planted early. I'm a student at a high school uh, in the 10th grade, and I'd like to give you an example of some of the stuff that goes on. In one of our classes, cellular, bi cellular biology, which you don't have to be a brain to get into, they, they just recently carried on one experiment with frogs. The, the object of the experiment was to prove that their digestic, di digestive tract still works after they are brain dead. So what the teacher did was she took a needle and she punctured the frog's head several times to mash up its brains. While it was alive, it had not been killed yet. And then they opened up the, the abdomen of the frog to uh, observe it still digesting the food. You know, first of all, you know, we, it's quite obvious that this type of thing is just completely ludicrous. And, and furthermore, who cares? Who cares? Dissection is safely shrouded from criticism behind such sacrosanct names as science, biology, life sciences, and lab skills. Standard dissection exercises involve the cutting up of frogs, cats, piglets, mice, and pigeons. Students are also encouraged to participate in science fairs where they compete against each other for prizes. Some of the projects entered at these fairs are full-fledged vivisectionist experiments involving live dogs, cats, and monkeys. These experiments are conducted by students in their teens. Can anyone seriously maintain that dissecting frogs and mice can teach our children about the human body and how it works? Dissection is an integral part of the pseudo-scientific mentality which controls our educational system at all levels making the existence and growth of vivisection possible. Twenty-five years ago, when I was doing my undergraduate work, why it was involved in, I was involved in uh, fulfilling all the university requirements to be a physiotherapist. I had to do a lot of dissection, which I did. I dissected cats, I dissected frogs, and so forth, earthworms, and I was good at it. Uh, the dissection went very well. Unfortunately, I forgot the fact that it was a class in human anatomy, not cat anatomy. And when I came to take the test, I did a miserable job. I failed the first examination. So then it became apparent that I should spend more time on human anatomy and less on dissecting the cat, which I did. And if people today would ask me, what part did dissecting, uh, dissecting cats and frogs play in my success as an, uh, well, an anatomist and a physiologist in that particular class, I would have to say absolutely nothing. Just nothing. <laughs>